the bones of the animal that is now Brontomerus were discovered in a quarry in Utah in the 1990s. The bones were recovered and taken back to the Oklahoma Museum of Natural History. And they sat there for the next uh, five or 10 years before I first saw them. But a colleague of mine, Matt Wadle, had, had an interest in them for a while, never got around to working on them. So when I happened to be over there in 2007, I was with Matt and uh, we took the opportunity then to look at the bones really closely and start figuring out exactly what this thing was. This picture shows us which of the bones we have of the animal and also gives you an idea of how big it would have been in life. Here we have the hip bone, here the shoulder blade. Those are the, the two most significant bits we have. And then these various fragments of ribs and the occasional vertebra. This is a photograph of the hip bone, which is the, the most informative of the bones of the new animal. Down here at the bottom, this is the socket where the, the femur attaches. So this is where the leg joins the body. And you can see that here at the front, sticking out the head of that, is this huge blade of bone where a lot of muscle would have attached. And let me show you how that compares with a couple of animals here at the Grant Museum. So here we have the hip of a false gharial. It's closely related to crocodiles. This is the socket where the femur joins the hip. And you can see here that this bone here, this is the equivalent of the one that we have in Brontomerus, has almost no bone coming out here forward ahead of that socket. Whereas in this baboon, this blade of the hip bone is much, much longer. You can see it coming out forward here. And this gives you a lot of attachment area for muscles here that would have run all the way down and attached to the femur. And that gives it powerful legs. And that's how Brontomerus would have been as well, would have had very powerful legs, muscular thighs, and that's why we gave it the name. Brontomerus means thunder thighs. One of the things that could have been used for is delivering a powerful kick. What's most likely is that that kicking behavior would have initially involved as a way for males to compete for the attention of females, dominance displays. There's every reason to think that that kick would have been used as well for defense against predators we actually found the remains of at least two individuals of Brontomerus of very different sizes. So we like to think that there could have been a mother and a child. And here we have the mother defending the child from a Uteraptor, which is like the raptors in Jurassic Park, but bigger and scarier. Roughly speaking, you can think of the adults as being like a very big elephant and the, the juvenile as being more like the size of a smallish cow. There are museums all around the world that are full of specimens that uh, there's so much work waiting to be done on them, which is why uh, an armchair paleontologist like myself never has to actually go out into the field and get my hands dirty, I don't have to dig. All I need to do is scavenge around museum shelves and there's ever such a lot of work to be done there.